Welcome back friends. In the previous video we have uh, talked about the adhesion of bacterial cell with our host cell and we have seen these are the different sequential stages for a perfect pathogenicity of a bacteria. Now in this video we will be talking about the destruction part or this part right. Now the, this destruction part is caused by the release of toxins right. We all already know that using the endotoxin or exotoxin they can cause diseases right. So let us look at this destruction. So let us scroll down a little bit and let's talk about the destruction part okay now in this case whenever we're talking about the destruction now this destruction is caused by so let's write destruction of host cell right so destruction of host cell this is caused by toxins now the toxin that we're here talking about can be of two different type endotoxin and exotoxin now the endotoxin is a part of bacterial cell. This is a part of bacterial cell, usually the part of gram negative bacterial cell, gram negative bacteria. And this is called the LPS layer or lipopolysaccharide layer of a bacteria which is present on the outside of the gram negative bacteria. And this exotoxin is uh, something which is which is free free toxin which is not attached to the membrane. Now the lipopolysaccharide layer is attached to the membrane but this is not attached to the membrane. It is free to diffuse, right? But in both the cases, use of LPS as endotoxin as well as use of exotoxin can harm the host cell. Okay, now this endotoxin or LPS layer is heat stable. That's their advantage. They are heat stable but most of the time the, the disease is caused by the free toxin or the exotoxin like the diphtheria toxin is the example of exotoxin, cholera toxin is the example of exotoxin, shiga toxin is the example of exotoxin. So exotoxins are very very dangerous. Let us look at the examples. Examples are cholera toxin, example is uh, diphtheria toxin and also example is shiga toxin, right. So let us let us look the mechanism of how this exotoxin works a little bit because endotoxin working is very less because in most of the dangerous diseases as you can see here exotoxin is taking the effect. Okay, now usually exotoxin is a protein component. It is made up with two different segments most of the time, but it can also be made up with several different subunits, more than two subunits also. But usually it is made up with two subunits together. Now the two subunit it is made up with, uh, let, let us draw the two subunit, uh, here it comes, let's say this is the subunit A and this is the subunit B. This is the two different subunit of an exotoxin, so this is an exotoxin structure, A and B, two subunits. Now the B subunit is called the membrane attachment subunit, so let me write it here, it is termed as membrane attachment or membrane binding subunit and this A part is termed as active subunit it is termed as active subunit okay it's a binding and this is the active now the activity of uh, this toxin action is more or less same for all these toxins more or less Let's talk about uh, here in this case we are talking about especially about the diphtheria toxin mode of action. Now in this case let us draw the host cell. Now the host cell membrane. Let us take the color. Yeah, yeah. Let's say this is the host cell membrane. Now the host cell membrane. Suppose this is the host cell membrane. And the host cell membrane uh, there is receptor. There are receptors actually. So here it is the receptor of something. Now this is the receptor. Now this toxin will go and bind with this receptor. So let us draw this toxin here again. This is the A subunit. Sorry, a little bit longer. Yeah. And this is the B subunit. Right? So they are attached and it is perfectly fit onto this receptor. So this is the receptor and this toxin, this exotoxin, diphtheria exotoxin binds with the receptor present on the host cell via the receptor binding or membrane binding domain and it is attached there. After this attachment, this is the host cell. After this attachment, there is an engulfment. So here it is, the cell, sorry, the host cell. 
sorry I should have drawn differently now then there will be an engulfment of this particular toxin so here it is the engulfment right so kind of engulfment like that so it's a kind of engulfment like that okay so here inside somewhere what we get is our receptor and receptor is holding the B subunit and the A subunit is attached with it so let me change the color this A subunit let us change the color of the A subunit it's red this is the A subunit red color let me draw it red otherwise it, it, it won't be visible so this is the A subunit okay set it at us now like that after that after the engulfment is complete what we can get from here we get a structure like that so let us scroll a little bit and in this case what we get a structure like that now in this case we are having the membrane intact and somewhere here inside the vesicle we are having our toxin we are having our toxin attached so here we go this is the receptor this is the component B and here we go the component A the red component A which is the active part it's still attached now now due to the change in the environment inside this micro vesicle there is a release of A subunit from the B so here we go here we will have the release of this so once this B is cleaved from A and we are having A released there like that and we are having only B sitting there so these are the sequential events A is clipped out a lot of A now will be clipped out and they will come out onto the cell membrane or into the cell cytoplasm or the host cell cytoplasm so say this is the A subunit this is another A this is another it's a lot of A subunit so lot of subunit A are removed and released onto the cytoplasm of the host cell now this lot of subunit A will lead to the different types of effect now what type of effects are caused by this A subunits so let us look at this effects now the effects caused by this A subunit in case of the diphtheria toxin is that they will stop the protein synthesis how they stop the protein synthesis we know for the protein synthesis for the protein synthesis for eukaryotes as well as prokaryotes we require specific type of factors which are called the elongation factors or EF now this elongation factor EF among the EF EF2 is one of the important elongation factors during the protein elongation now this diphtheria toxin A part or A toxin or the active part of the diphtheria toxin will act onto this elongation factor 2 and it will attach the ribosyl group of the ADP the ribosyl group so it will take NAD plus sorry this is a very bad handwriting so let me change it for you so it will take in a d just like that okay now it will provide this ribosyl group and attach this ribosyl group onto this ef2 so simply what it does is ribosyl group is attached so ribosyl group is attached to this ef2 as a result of this ribosyl attachment to the ef2 it converts this ef2 into so let me write the conversion EF2 is now attached with ADPR so ribosyl group is now attached with this EF2 it is inactivating the activity of EF2 so simply it is now inactivating EF2 so as a result of inactivation of the EF2 protein synthesis is also halted so protein synthesis is blocked Okay, so that's how this diphtheria toxin works. In case of cholera toxin, also this uh, they 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 just ribosylate the G protein also, right? And in case of sugar toxin, they they block the amino acid so that the amino acid binding is not possible and protein synthesis is not possible. In most of the case, they block the protein synthesis using this active part. Okay, so that's how exotoxin works to degrade 
uh, the host cell to kill the host cells as a result of not synthesizing the proteins the cell will die in a few moments right so these are the different responsible agents or causing agents of our diseases right so these are the sequential steps remember we have we have uh, talked about the different part like this entry addition propagation then the destruction it can be caused by endo or exo but the exotoxin is activity is much more common so we have seen several uh, round of toxicity and how they achieve this task in this case okay so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you